Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to St. Jude. Today, our celebrant is Father Ricardo. He is back and safe. And uh, we have Deacons John and Deacon Robert today, uh, the dynamic duo. And our homilist today will be Deacon John. So if you would please stand, greet your neighbor, and join us in singing our opening song. Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with you. Good evening, brothers and sisters. I told the deacons before Mass, today we have the whole army, two deacons uh, <laughs> and all the acolytes and everyone else. Okay. <laughs> well, brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred Eucharist. <laughs> I confess to Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers, brothers and sisters, that I have greatly seen in my thoughts, thoughts and in my words, in what, what I have done and what, what I have failed, failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, Mary ever Virgin, Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, sisters to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Thank you. 
giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book, the prophet Jeremiah. You duped me, O Lord, and I let myself be duped. You were too strong for me, and you triumphed. All the day, I'm an object of laughter. Everyone mocks me. Whenever I speak, I must cry out. Violence and outrage is my message. The word of the Lord has brought me derision and reproach all the day. I say to myself, I will not mention him. I will speak in his name no more. But then it becomes like fire burning in my heart, imprisoned in my bones. I grow weary holding it in. I cannot endure it. The word of the Lord. Thank you. my 
seek for you my flesh pass my soul thirst like the earth parched and lifeless parched and lifeless without water my soul is thirsting for you Lord my God my soul is thirsting for you Lord my God thus have I gazed toward you in the sanctuary see your power and your glory Good in life, my lips shall glorify you. My soul is thirsting for you, oh Lord my God. My soul is thirsting for you, oh Lord my God. Thus will I bless you while I live. Call upon your name As with the riches of the paper Shall my soul be satisfied Exalt the lips My mouth shall praise you My soul is thirsting for you shadow of your wings I shout for joy my soul clings fast to you your right hand it does holds me my soul is thirsting for you Lord my A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, your spiritual worship. Do not conform yourselves to this age but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and pleasing and perfect. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer greatly from the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. Then Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. God forbid, Lord, no such thing shall ever happen to you. He turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle to me. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. What profit would there be for one to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? Or what can one give in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man will come with his angels in his Father's glory, and then he will repay all according to his conduct. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord. Lord. So this was a kind of a random memory that popped into my brain as I was uh, sitting here contemplating this, these passages. And it happened a long, long time ago. When I was 11 or 12 years old, I, uh, I visited my grandmother who lived in Richmond, California, which is right across the bay just north of Oakland uh, by San Francisco. And I spent a couple of days with her. I was living, and my family had moved to Nebraska by then, and my parents were off visiting other family or friends, I think. Now, my grandmother did not drive or own a car, so I remember we took a bus, public transportation, to a shopping mall, and she gave me some money to, uh, to go spend on some music. So I went into a record store. I believe it was Tower Records. Okay, most of you know what I'm talking about when I say record store. Some of you don't. There was a time we used to buy music on these vinyl discs about this big, and they had like maybe 10 songs on them. There were no CDs and cassettes. There was no streaming. There was no downloading, any of that. Anyway, so here I am, a young boy living in Nebraska in 1974, maybe 1975, and I'm wandering around the store looking for something to buy. And this older kid walks up to me and starts talking to me, asking me what I was doing and convinces me that the best music ever was a genre called funk. <laughs> I have to be careful when I say that, funk. I wasn't sure, but he was insistent. And so I bought the album that he wanted me to buy, and I believe it was Funkadelic by Parliament. Now, I was, at the time, I was duped or is it deceived into buying something I really didn't want to do, and, maybe had a better use of my grandmother's money. The music was a bit different for me at that particular point in time, and I think I listened to that album once as I was growing up. Although now when I look back and understand what funk was, it was just rhythm and blues, soul music. So I kind of appreciate the, the experience of this memory. So we hear in the first reading that Jeremiah kind of felt the same way, although he was upset that it was God that had duped him. Now, Jeremiah was one of the great prophets who lived 600 years or so prior to the birth of Christ, just prior to the Babylonian exile. And he was given the task by God to warn the Israelites that their infidelity to the covenants would result in disaster. And his message was met with mockery and laughter, and he had reached this utter point of frustration where he said he would no longer mention or speak of God any longer. But this love of, his, of God and his duty to the covenant was stronger than his selfishness. And he said, it becomes like fire burning in my heart, imprisoned in my bones, or I grow weary holding it in. Unlike myself so long ago in that record store, he really wasn't duped into doing something he did not want to do. But I think he struggled with his relationship with God, something that we all struggle with. We hear a similar thread in the gospel reading for this Sunday. 
Now, it's a continuation of last week's gospel. It's all pretty much one chunk in which we heard the disciples responding to Jesus when he asked them, who do people say that I am? Then they said that people thought he was, that Jesus was Elijah or Jeremiah, Jeremiah, the one we just read in the first reading. And then he asked them, but who do you say that I am? And we heard Simon's great confession, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And that's when Jesus changes Simon's name to Peter, the rock, which he was gonna build his church and the gates of the netherworld would not prevail against it. So imagine, you have to go back to what they were thinking about. Imagine the joy the disciples must have experienced in this time, knowing that they were in the presence of the Messiah. In their mind, he was the one that was going to bring victory and freedom of Israel from the Roman conquerors, that Israel would once again be an independent and great nation. Or so they thought. Then today, we hear Jesus tell them that he must go to Jerusalem, suffer greatly, and be killed. So to Peter, it was inconceivable this idea that Jesus was going to be killed is it just did not fit the narrative of whom he thought the Messiah would be. It just made no sense. And then the words spoken by Jesus are some of the harshest we've ever heard in the gospel. Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle to me. You are not thinking as God does, but as humans do. This was ruthless and hard to imagine this type of response from Jesus. Can you imagine the confusion in the disciples? I bet they felt that they had been duped as well in following this man called Jesus. I believe this moment of time is a turning point in the life of the disciples in Matthew's gospel. See, Jesus first answers the question of who he is, the Christ. Then he states that his church will have dominion on earth. And then he continues with how he will accomplish the will of his father by his suffering and death. And then he finishes with what are the conditions of being a disciple or a follower of Christ. I guarantee you that when he was talking about what was going to happen to him in Jerusalem, that the conclusion of his comments, six words, were totally ignored. What were those six words? On the third day be raised See, Jesus did not come to bring victory for Israel over the Romans, but rather to bring victory for us all over death and sin. In this reading from the gospel, we are witnessing a change in the emotional state of Jesus. His teaching, his instruction, his everything from this point forward gets a bit more serious, a bit more direct, a bit more focused. Jesus knows what the future holds, And he knows that it will be extremely difficult for his disciples to understand. But he wants them and he wants us to understand the will of the Father in our lives. That like Jeremiah, being a follower of Christ will not always be peaceful. In my homily on the Transfiguration a few weeks ago, I spoke that we all experience pain, suffering, anxieties, depression, worries, failures, setbacks, disappointments, injustice, sickness, and so many other difficulties that I could carry on. These are the crosses that we must pick up and carry. Jesus also says we must deny ourselves. I think this is sometimes hard to understand as well. What does that mean? To me, at the most basic element, it means that, we need, that I need to get over myself, to stop always looking for comfort, and not only pick up my cross, but, to, but with the Simeon as example, to help others carry their cross as well. And to do this, we need to know who Jesus is. We need to know who, in our, who he is in our life, and we need to develop and have a relationship with him. I went on a silent retreat three weeks ago. It started Friday afternoon and went through Sunday afternoon. And the theme was direction of life. And our retreat director, Father Derek Vo greatly challenged me with his talks. I spent much of the weekend contemplating the very first talk he gave on Saturday morning. We were first asked 
to ask for the grace to better know and understand Jesus so that our love for Jesus will grow. And so with that grace in mind, asking for that grace, we then read over a couple of selected readings and a couple of selected uh, scripture texts, one which was Matthew 16, 13 through 16, last week's gospel. And what got me was, but who do you say that I am? The simple question from Jesus, but who do you say that I am? It, it went deep into my soul and it bothered me all weekend. And I realized if we truly want to have a relationship with Christ, we all need to be able to answer that question. Who is Jesus to you? Who do I say Jesus is to me? And I further realized that this is something that develops over our lifetime. It's not a one and done thing. But like all relationships, it takes time and effort. This very last weekend here at St. Jude, we had a speaker for the volunteer retreat. Many of you may have been in attendance for that, Michael Gormley. And he said, if you want to know Jesus, read the Gospels. His recommendation was start with Mark, because it's the shortest and most succinct. When you're done, read Mark again, and then go to um, Luke, John, and then Matthew. You get to know Jesus through his word. So when we can answer that question with the confidence and conviction of St. Peter, then our crosses become light, our lives more fulfilled, we can love others deeper, and we have a destination in sight for the end of our lives. <laughs> Back to being duped. I think God does dupe us. He says, trust me, and then leads us not into easy ways, but in hard ways. See, God challenges us every day, and we follow him not because we love our crosses, but because we love our Lord. And when we lose our life with humility and direct our service to our brothers and sisters, our family and our friends, we will be led into greater joy, into greater freedom, into resurrection. Do you have a fire burning in your heart? Do we thirst for him? How will you respond to Jesus when he asks you, who do you say that I am? And then how would you respond to Jesus when he says, come, follow me? I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead 
and let the world to come. Amen. We praise God for his wisdom, which is beyond our understanding. As we come before him today, let us offer up our needs to him and ask him for, for that wisdom in our lives. For our Pope Francis, the successor of Peter, may he use the power of the keys handed to him by our Lord wisely, according to God's plan. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. <laughs> for those who accept the burden of public office, that the powers of evil may not prevail over them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for children who are placed in orphanages, that they may find a family to love them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for peace in our country and a return to civil order, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For ourselves, that we may entrust our lives to the wisdom given to us by our Father, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for all who labor, that they may do so with dignity and be afforded fair wages, let us pray to the Lord. For those who are sick and who are dying, and for those names written in the St. Jude Book of Intentions, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For those who have died, especially Johnny Bork, Dale Brooks, Ron Stays, Latita Benito, Mario Putti, Elizabeth Williams, Pacifico Alman Gomez, Gilberta Valasana, and Sandra Turnbill, we pray to the Lord. And for the repose of the soul of Kitty Bashan, for which this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, you ask Peter to follow after you and to carry his cross. We ask you ask for the grace that you may give to us so that we can carry our crosses and follow after you. We ask, you ask that you may fulfill these petitions and bring them to fulfillment according to your will. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, I come, I confess.
God, how I need you. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what, if, that what it celebrates in mystery, it may accomplish in power, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the death, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his, to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. You have set Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the breath of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy 
to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Edward our Bishop, Gregory his auxiliary bishop, and all the clergy. <coughs> Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. <clears throat> Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
covered in flesh and blood, you came to us. And nothing of consequence to see. Inside of time and space, you laid your life down on a cross to rescue me, Jesus, born of God in the flesh. I will not fall. set me free Jesus born of God in the flesh I will not forget you lived and you died
Sometimes our faith in God What reveals the Father's love What can lead the wayward home What can melt a heart of stone What can free the guilty ones What can save and overcome Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and steer us to serve you in our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Sit down, brothers and sisters, for the announcements. The annual carnival is this week, September 7 to the 10. Thank you to all who have already signed up. It is going to be a great community event. Here are some of our final needs. Adult volunteers are still needed for setup, tear down, welcome table at the tally entrance and first aid tent. Water a name brand soda donation Plus the week of the carnival, we need desserts and cupcakes. Gift card donations for the raffle and silent auctions. Please prayerfully consider participating. You can find volunteer sign up information in the bulletin on page two or on the website. If you have already signed up to be a volunteer, you can pick up your t-shirt in the reception area. Get your raffle tickets in the con courtyard and reception area this weekend. One final note regarding the carnival. You will notice on page four and five of this week bulletin that the price for the unlimited rights wristband is incorrect. The correct cost is $35 for unlimited rights at Tally on Thursday night. So 35 is a good deal. So I think that's per person, I'm assuming, right? Okay. And so it's gonna be 70 for two. So buy one at, seven, at 35 and two at 70, okay? <laughs> Number two, we are pleased to announce that the second mosaic for our columbarium has been installed. If you haven't had the opportunity to see it, please stop by the columbarium to see this beautiful addition to this very special place for our parish. Number three, since this upcoming weekend is carnival, please be aware that parking will be more constrained as a result of the visiting carnival goers. If you are attending the Saturday vigil mass or the Sunday evening masses, please plan to allot more time to park before mass as well as to exit the parking lot after mass. So I guess whoever comes, whoever comes first gets it first, I guess, right? <laughs> Number four, 
St. Judy seeking parishioners who would like to help with cleaning altar servers' basements. There are several people on this team, but we need several more to help carry the load. We hope to have enough so that it will only require your help one time a month. If you are interested, please contact Deacon Robert. He's in action. Okay. Number five, in, our, in observance of Labor Day, the church offices will be closed on Monday, September 4. We will only have one Mass that day, which will be the 8.30 Mass a.m., the 8.30 a.m. Mass, okay? Number six, the way is a ministry for healing, growth, and hope for those experiencing separation or divorce. Beginning September 14th, we will meet every Thursday evening at 6.45 p.m. in the formation room. Contact Deacon Craig for more information. Deacon Craig? Yeah, Craig. Yeah. Okay. Number seven, just a note to all our parents, all RE classes, I guess religious education, all religious education classes begin the week of September 10th. Please remember that if, you're, if you have a child in pre-K through eighth grade classes, a parent is required to attend the first class. Number eight, is God calling you or someone you know to the Catholic Church? The Rite of Christian Initiation for Adults, RCIA, will begin on Tuesday, September 19th in the parish hall. See today's bulletin or our St. Jude website for more information, okay? And today we have the Chalice Program. So if that family can come forward. Okay. Oh, surprise. <laughs> wow. I was, I was thinking, where's the other half? <laughs> Very good. As part of our vocation program to encourage priestly and religious vocations, a family or individual at each Mass has volunteered to take home a chalice as a reminder to pray throughout the month for vocations to the priesthood and religious life. Would that family or individual please come forward? And here they are now, okay? <laughs> so it's always good to, um, to talk to the kids since they're little, to instill in them the to arise in them the desire for the vocation, okay? Because when they are like in their teenage, it's already more difficult, okay? <laughs> so since little, that way when they, when they are like this age, how old are you guys? 18. 18 and 16. By then they more or less could have an idea, okay? As you receive this chalice, we pray that the Lord will hear the prayers of your servants who have been called to pray for vocations and bless them for giving their time and prayers to this much worthy calling. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. So who takes which one? Ladies first. And Dick and second. Ah, okay. <laughs> okay. Very good. <laughs> Hebrews, please, please rise. Well, have a good weekend, and uh, hopefully you can enjoy next week um, the festival here in the parish, and um, bring everyone else, okay? That's going to be my first time, so ho hopefully I can get a, a chance to ride the rides, and let's see how it goes. <laughs> Okay, brothers. So enjoy the weekend. Have a good weekend. The Lord be with you. And with, with your, your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Behold the wood that bears our name. Behold.
hold the nails that hold our sin The tree from which salvation blooms The death by which we're born again And we take up our cross and follow Him We lay down our lives that we might live We carry the hope of Christ within We take up our cross and follow Him We take up our cross and follow within we take up our cross and follow him 